for this. All right, let's get it. Perfect, guys. So really the, the call for today, um, leadership call, is going to be on mostly posture. And posture, uh, I'm going to break down what posture is, and I'm going to talk about why this is actually the thing that's holding you back and myself from going to the next level, okay? So if you see me going back and forth, it's because I have some notes that I want to make sure I hit, um, hit on. But uh, one thing I want to say before I go into this is whatever your goals are, um, everybody in this chat has told me personally that building this business, making an impact, serving and leaving, leading other people, and essentially going chairman, not for, not for the title, but for what it means. So you need to identify what does that mean to you? Um, but the conversations are going to be different on this call. And um, I just want to implore you to take some time every day based on your goals, which is to develop the skills and go chairman and really make an impact. That's what you really say that you want to do. Um, I recommend you go out and look up videos by Ray Higdon, just as an example, Ray Higdon, okay? And I want you to, I want you to think about what's an area right now when it comes to the building side that you want to improve on, that you want to get better with, uh, whether it's prospecting, whether it's um, you know following up, whether it's edification, whether it's presenting, inviting, go type that in, or even just go to his page and watch the first video. I promise you, you're going to get hooked. His video is like eight to 10 minutes, but this is where I'm, I'm learning a lot of uh, the stuff that, you know, I'm getting involved with. So anyways, I'm going to start you off with a quote. Okay. And this quote says, and also guys, let me know if my Wi-Fi is going out. Um, we're with Alex's family this weekend. So I'm actually sitting outside because it's early over here. <laughs> um, so I want to start off with a quote. You can write this down. Um, I heard this from Tony Robbins and he said the difference between I must versus I should is the life you want versus the life you have. I'm going to say that one more time. The difference between I must versus I should is the life that you want versus the life that you have. And a great analogy is either I must prospect today or I I should prospect. There's a difference. So what's been the conversation? What's been the, the internal dialogue that you've been having with yourself about prospecting, for example? Or maybe it's, maybe it's uh, you know, going to the gym, okay? Just as another example, working out. Like there's so many different examples. So what's been the conversation, even social media? Like building your brand is important. Like making sure that people know who you are, the value that you have to, to bring to the table and how you can help them. So what's the difference must versus should and what's the conversation that you've been having with yourself about the things that you know that you've got to be doing, okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about, uh, I, I know I put in there acceptance, posture and acceptance. I'm going to talk about that as well and what I mean by acceptance and why I wanted to bring it up on this call. Um, but I actually want to say this really quickly. Type in the chat, type a one in the chat if you've ever been rejected building this business. I got to get a temperature for where we're at. All right. It's everybody. We've all been rejected unless you just have not been talking to people. Um, okay. I want to give you guys some perspective because a lot of times that Ray Hagen actually said this, he said, one of the number one things that we do inside of network marketing, inside of what we do um, as, a, as a profession is we overthink. We get a, we implement, and then we do this with trading all the time. We implement a new strategy. We go for a few weeks, maybe even a week. We don't even give it very long time. And if we don't see results within those first few weeks or a couple weeks or a week or whatever, then we don't believe that that strategy or that system or that script actually works. I'm gonna talk about that on this call. This is, this is like, I had, a, I had a breakthrough with this and I know somebody on this call is gonna have a breakthrough, okay? So Ray Higdon said, he, he's had over, probably in his career, he's been involved for over a decade. Um, he said he's had over 10,000, it's probably more because this video was done a little bit ago. He's had over 10,000 people like never, ever respond back to him when he's prospecting. And he does the cold market prospecting. 
He said he's had over 10,000 people never, ever respond back to him. Not even, not even like maybe even open his message. Maybe left him on red. So when I get left on red, when I go and cold, cold market prospect and people don't message me back or they see my message or they don't even open it or they tell me no, I don't give a crap. I don't care. Um, and he talks about this in one of his videos where you need to be, basically he said, you need to be so addicted to the activity of production over the actual outcome of what people are going to say or do. I don't care what people say when I ask them the right questions. I'm asking them the right questions. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, now the ball's in their court, whether, whether this is for them or not. You either see this or you don't. And I'm only looking, you can write this down. I'm literally, this has gone over my head so many times. And hopefully maybe it sticks with somebody on this call. But you've got to get this down. We are literally only looking to work with people that are looking for what we do. That have been looking and praying for what we do. You ever work with somebody that's just like hungry? You don't, you don't need to motivate them. You don't need to like see where they're at because they're already 10 steps ahead. Not everybody's going to be like that, but I'm just saying, you ever work with somebody like that, that's just hungry and self-motivated, like coachable, they understand the power of this. Like they understand like, yo, this is literally what I've been looking for. Those are the people that you want to work with. Okay. Not people that you have to maybe convince to see the, the value of this, which I don't do that and neither should you. So I say, I say what Ray Higdon's been through, 10,000 people never even responded back to him in prospecting. Think about how many people he's had to reach out to, to get to that number, okay? And he was the top, him and his wife both were top, and they were both in separate accounts at one, at one point, were both the top earners in a company where you sell a product, a product, like, like skin, skin stuff, health and wellness stuff, okay? We're not doing that. We are actually teaching people a skill set. Okay. So if you've ever felt like, yo, like this, I don't think this is actually working or you're overthinking, or, you know, so many people are just leaving me on red or so many people just aren't messaging me back or opening my message. You know, it's not even worth it to cold market prospect. It's not even worth it to, you know, hit up my warm market because they just, you know, they don't take me seriously or they don't respond back to me. Yo, number one, you are thinking, you're not thinking correctly. And I say thinking correctly because Cash Cartier says that all the time. You're not thinking about this in the right way. Okay. And I, and I want to tell you, and I'm just being real because I'm not trying to like sugarcoat anything. You've got to think bigger. You've got to think different about this. Like when you think that way, I want you to think about how the potential new person that you bring on, or maybe you have a team already, or you have a person already, how are they going to think about this if you're thinking like that? So number one, it's normal. Normalize the fact that you're going to get rejected. Okay. Normalize the fact that when you cold market prospect, or you talk to people, they're going to leave you on red. Okay. It's not something to question or overthink that you're doing something wrong, whatever, unless you're just not following the system, then you have another problem, <laughs> okay? Um, so basically, he was saying, number one problem with network marketing is that you're overthinking. And uh, you just have to ask yourself, get real, are you willing to get rejected? I've been, I've been in the game for a minute, and I don't care about rejection. And that's a great feeling. It's a very freeing feeling when you just don't give a crap. And guys, if you're on the call and you're like, no, I don't. I don't care. I don't care about rejection. I'm willing to get rejected. Okay, great. So that means you talk to people every single day. You prospect every single day, no matter what. Because if you're willing to get rejected, you make that a non-negotiable. You do that every day, no matter what. So get, just get real. Stop. Like, I don't know where everybody's at. I'm just saying, if you are willing to get rejected, then there's no reason why you wouldn't have been prospecting every day, no matter what. Because it's not going to feel good in the beginning. It doesn't feel good ever, but like you get used to it. Not in a bad way. You just get used to it. It becomes normal. So anyways, I think you guys get my point. Um, I think one thing that he said too, that I wrote down to make sure I said this, but he said, ultimately, the reason why we don't do certain things, whether it's prospect or ask certain questions or ask, you know, hey, do you have any further questions? Or are you ready to get started? Ask for the close, like ask for it. Or like, take your business seriously. Like this is a profession like act like a professional, ask people, are you ready to get started? Because a lot of times we don't ask people that question because we don't ever believe that they're actually going to sign up with us. We don't believe that we're actually worthy of people to sign up with, okay? So a lot of the times we don't do certain things or even like post on our socials. How many times have you thought about posting and you just did it? 
I know I have. Ultimately, he said, we don't want to run the risk of looking back. And I know that may sound like very surface level. I get it. You may be in your head like, no, no, I don't think that way. No, no, no. Like, I actually think that way sometimes. Okay. And I'm sure, and I've thought about this, you have to start to operate like this as just somebody in charge of your business, like your business. I'm not trying to say like dominate over your team. I'm just saying like, you're the CEO of your business. You have to start to think like this. Like every excuse, for example, that I allow inside of myself, I'm literally opening the door for the team to have those excuses. Even if I don't say it out loud, I have that energy. That's why I say, turn your camera on because energy matters. Okay. Um, and ask yourself when you guys, when you're on team calls and you're running the call, let's say you had eight people on the call right now and you're me, you're running the call. Would you want to be talking to a bunch of blank screens? <laughs> no, like reciprocate the energy. Okay. So that's, that's all I'm trying to say. So we think about those things because we don't want to look bad. All right. So get over it. Just get over it. You're, you just literally have to jump in. You have to like, you just have to take that first step. So I wanted to just speak on acceptance really quick because I think a lot of times we want to be better. We want to do better. We want to get better, but we're so consumed and paralyzed and stuck by where we're at right now. Okay. And the, I got this from, have you guys ever heard of um, Dr. Joe Dispenza? Ever read his book or listen to the audible, um, breaking the habit of being yourself. So I was listening to it. Um, I've got it on Audible and I was listening to it the other day. So I'm holding the computer up so I can do this. So it's a little shaky. Um, so I was listening to some of it the other day and he said something really powerful. And whether you've heard this or not, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say it again and maybe something might click for you. So I want you to ask yourself, it's a rhetorical question, ask you, where are you at in your life right now? What does that look like right now? What does that look like? What do your results look like? And we're, we're strictly talking about business, okay? Trading, I'm sure y'all are crushing it in trading. Talking about business because we want to serve, we want to leave, we want to impact, okay? Where are you at in your life right now as far as your results? Take it, take it a step back. Where are, you at, where are you at in your life as far as your habits, your behaviors, which are controlling your actions, okay? Cool. Where are you at right now in your life when it comes to how you feel about, let's say, the things that you know that you've got to do to build this business? How do you feel about prospecting? How do you feel about, I'm just giving some examples, posting on social, right? How do you feel about those things? And take it a step further. How do you think about those things? Like, get real. Get real about how you view those things, your perspective, which stems through your belief system. I promise this is all going to tie into each other. You've got to get real about how you feel about those things, how you're thinking about those things. What are your actions, habits, and behaviors look like? What's that cycle that you've gotten yourself in, good or bad, productive or not? What does your results look like because of, because of the way that you do certain things, because of the way that you think, because of your perspective? I want you to get real about it. And it may not be right now on this call, but it may be after. But whatever it is, I want you to just accept it because whatever you don't accept, you're going to continue to live in denial about. When you accept something, you can actually move on. I had this realization the other day. I was talking to, it was funny, I was talking to Caitlin. Shout out to Caitlin. Last night got me on a three-way call, turned into a launch, got this guy started. Shout him out in the chat if you haven't already. His name's Orlando out of Michigan, rocking with crypto, super, super stoked for him. Like just kept talking about how he wanted freedom. And we've got the sauce. So shout out to you girl. But we were on a, um, our check-in call yesterday. And um, it was funny because we were talking about, or I had brought it up with, um, what was I going to say? Kayla, do you remember what I said? Oh, people pleasing. That's right. Um, it was a random like kind of thought that I had, but it was relevant. And I had a, I had a thought, it's just an example, y'all. But I had a thought the other day because I was like, yo, Abby, like naturally, guys, if you haven't picked up on this or whatever, like I care so much about like what I do, my reputation and not only that, but like making sure everybody is good. Like no matter what, the team, my family, people even like I don't even know sometimes. Like if I see somebody like struggling, I like I will do what I need to. And I know that sounds a little cliche. And you're like, yeah, 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 I would do that too. Like if somebody needs help, I'll help them. Yes, I get that. 
Um, and I think there's, you know, you, some of you guys on this call, you may be telling yourself like, yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm definitely a people pleaser. I feel like I've been a people pleaser for so long. And I'm going to explain myself in a second why I'm bringing up acceptance with this story. Because for so long, I would see like, just, just for an example, like I would see people um, on the team, okay? Get text messages. Guys, I get texts every single week of something, something, something's going on, okay? Um, and like my first initial response is like, man, like how can I help this person? And of course, it's a good response to have. But when you're constantly trying to save that person from learning from their own mistakes or from growing through that adversity or overcoming that problem or that challenge, you're actually doing them a disservice. And I didn't realize what God was doing this entire summer for me. Like there was so much, there was so much stuff that happened this summer where I was just like, why? Like not trying to like question it with an ego, but I was just like reflecting. I was like, what? Why, how did I get myself here? Why are some of these things like literally happening right now? And I couldn't like get over it. I was in denial about maybe some of the things that I was doing and the way that I was thinking and, and the way that I was feeling and how I kind of just like manifested this. And I didn't understand in the moment. And then I realized I was like, yo, you were literally like, God, you were like literally pushing me to the edge till I realized like what was actually happening. So I realized like never again will I do those things. Not because I'm, not because I don't want to help, but because I realize how much I've built myself by dealing with the adversity head on, by embracing the BS, right? By going through the problems and the challenges and growing through it, choosing to grow through those things, choosing to allow the test to become my testimony. So if you're going through something right now, problems, challenges, whatever, whether it's personal or in the business or not, just know like, that's something you literally have to grow through. And I don't want to be that person anymore, nor do I, nor can I. Like, if we want to grow, I can't be that person that just comes in and saves everybody. I would do that all the time, whether it was sending money, and then I'd be like, why did I send that? It was like out of habit. Like, whenever my sisters need something, like, literally, like, I'm like the first one. And it just is what it is. I need to stop doing that. I need to let them fall on their face a little bit. But I say that because I had to come to that acceptance point because I kept denying my behavior. I kept denying my habits. I kept denying the way that I was feeling and thinking about things, my perspective and the results that it was giving me. I was like pointing blame, which by the way, blame is not a business strategy, okay? So when you can accept something, you can move on and you can be open to making necessary changes. So you're coachable, right? Everybody on this call is you're coachable. Um, and I wanna just say this, when you cannot accept something, you're gonna stay right where you're at. Okay, so take the time, maybe it's today, maybe it's after this call, and just ask yourself, where are you at? And what have you not been accepting? Or what have you, what have you been tolerating? Okay, and I want to read something um, that I wrote down from the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it kind of ties into a lot of this, so you can like visually understand. So Joe Dispenza says in his book, how many times have you tried to create something, thinking in your mind that the end result, that the end result, result was possible but feeling in your heart that it wasn't. I'm gonna say that again. How many times have you tried to create something for yourself? Thinking in your mind that the end result was possible, but feeling in your heart that it wasn't. Y'all get what I'm saying? You think in your mind, let's say for example, that going platinum 600, going platinum 600 again, going P1000, going P1000 again, maybe you deranked, okay? thinking or chairman, whatever, thinking in your mind that the end result is possible, but feeling in your heart that it isn't. You're not congruent. You're not in alignment. So you're thinking one way, but you're feeling in another. And when you're thinking one way and you're feeling another, the universe isn't going to respond to how you're thinking. It speaks in frequencies. How do you feel? You have to be cohesive. You have to be congruent. So he said, you're incoherent, nothing manifests from this. Quantum creating, he talks about, only works when your thoughts and your feelings are aligned. And I say this because I want you, I wanted you to think about how have you been thinking? How have you been feeling about the things that you know you've got to do to build this business, to help people, to serve, to lead, to impact, to build yourself, to lead by example, okay? So he said, I'm gonna read this last part. He said, when you hold clear, focused thoughts about your, about your purpose, accompanied, by your passionate emotional engagement. This was a mouthful, but let me, let me read it again. I'm gonna start over. 
When you hold clear, focused thoughts about your purpose, clear and focused thoughts about your purpose, accompanied okay, by your passion and emotional engagement, you are broadcasting a stronger frequency that then pulls you towards a potential reality that matches what you want. So you hold clear, focused thoughts, what you're thinking about your purpose, okay, accompanied by your passion. You have to be emotionally engaged, emotionally tied to what it is that you're doing. When you do that, when you have both working together, same frequency, okay, in alignment, you broadcast, you broadcast a stronger frequency, a stronger, higher vibration that is pulling you, literally pulling you, okay, towards a potential reality that matches whatever it is that you want. And guys, I'm going to give you a great example. I don't know if this is maybe the greatest example, but just to give you an example, this whole summer when I've been like questioning myself about the things that I've been doing, like, not like they were bad. It's just like, am I moving forward or what? Like, am I actually growing through this or what? Um, I had, and I'm just saying this because I want to maybe inspire somebody on the call that it is possible. You literally just need to continue to move forward and don't ever give up, continue to persevere through the BS. But yesterday was pay quicker day. Okay. And I hope, I hope you guys, whoever are, you know, y'all that are ranked right now, you guys are understanding the power of residual income, even if it's an extra 150 bucks a month, even if it's an extra 600 bucks a month, thousand bucks a month. Okay. I had my biggest check in not just I'm Academy, but like our profession ever yesterday. And God's timing is real. We're, and I had one of my biggest trading weeks this week. We move into our, like, guys, I cannot tell you how many things. I'm just giving y'all some perspective. I cannot tell you how many problems I've experienced, okay? We all deal with problems. I get it. I cannot tell you how many things, like, in the last, literally, like, two, three weeks that I've just had to put down for. I've had to pay for things that were just completely unexpected. Like, we, are, we know that things are going to happen, but, like, I was like, yo, that came out of nowhere. Where did this come from? How did that happen? Who need? okay, so-and-so is needing this. Like, literally so many different things. And on top of that, we're moving. Y'all know moving is a, is a, you know what. Okay. So not only did I have one of my biggest trading weeks ever, but I got my biggest residual check ever. Like I'm talking P five K residual check money on a Friday. How? Just stay the course, keep the faith, make sure that your thoughts and your feelings are accompanied um, and, and, in, and in alignment together. So I wanted to just share that with you because a lot of great things can happen, but only if you see through whatever you're growing through, only if you continue to be mindful of the way that you feel and the way that you think to get the, to, to basically, um, you know, take the actions that you have, the habits, the, 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 the habits, the, the behaviors, all of it, the results, everything. Okay. So I want to just say that, and I'm going to move on to posture. How are we doing? I'm, let me look at the chat. All right. Let's go. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry for this uh, dog. He's being really loud. All right. So I'm going to talk about posture right now. Hopefully we're all moving along. We're feeling good. You understand what I'm coming from. But I'm going to talk about why posture is, I know he said overthinking is the number one reason, but this is honestly, guys, oh my God. This is honestly why you're probably where you're at right now. Number one, go back to acceptance. Think about those things for yourself, okay? But I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't know why this has not been taught. And if this has been taught, I just was a zombie when I was listening to it because I was not paying attention. Um, I don't know why this was not taught or why we haven't heard this before. And if you wanna learn more about it, just go watch Ray Higdon. He talks about it all the time, posture, okay? Posture, you're not where you wanna be. And me too, guys, I'm talking about myself right now, okay? as well. You are not where you want to be. We can get clarity on this because of your posture. And I want to say this, every level that you want to grow through or grow to has an elevated posture. Okay. And I'm going to give you an example. P5K has a different posture from P2. P1K has a different posture or P2 has a different posture than P1. P1 has a different posture than P6, so on and so forth. The posture level from P150 to P600 is different. The posture level from P6 to P1 
is different, okay? And so for me, like what's holding me back from going P5 is obviously a bunch of things, but to nail it down, it's my posture. And I'm gonna break down what is posture, okay? So posture is your approach. Posture is the way that you show up about what you do in every single interaction. So posture isn't like a step to follow. Posture is a way of being, okay? Posture, you can write this down. Posture is the belief in what you have. So posture is basically the belief that what you have is greater than, ex than external acceptance or approval. I'm gonna say that again. Posture is the belief in what you have is greater than external acceptance or approval, aka meaning you, you have the utmost belief in the value that you bring to the table. Not even like yourself, but like, like yes, yourself, because you think about, you know, would this person sign up with me? I get that. But what do you have? My backbone is yes with myself because I built Abby, but the newest person has it. Technically, most people, they don't have the conviction that a lot of us do have, or maybe we think that we have, but we actually don't, okay? The newest person um, can build this business with posture, not based off of conviction. They haven't done anything. They don't have a result. They have nothing to show for. That's fine. They're excited, okay? They have posture because of their excitement and their, their belief in what this can do and where this can take them, okay? If you've been in the game, like myself, like a lot of y'all on this call, okay? You have conviction, hopefully. And if you don't, you, like, you've got to take that time to, to take a step back of where is your belief lie? Because if, if you don't have posture in your conversations about around what we do and what we have to offer, guys, this is going to be very difficult to build this business, okay? So it's the belief in the value, okay? The belief in what you have that's greater than external acceptance or approval. So I want to give a great example. Ray like drew this mountain. You guys can go watch the video. I'm just kind of summarizing it, but I want to talk about it, maybe open discussion. But he said, you don't get posture at the top of the mountain. Y'all ever see that? Like you don't, you don't start doing events when you're at the top, right? You don't start doing events when, once you go P1, P2 chairman, you start doing events when you're platinum 150, before you're even P150. I remember, I think I was, I think I just hit P150. I remember because I was just, I was on a tangent, like I was on a roll. And when I was like on my P6, P1K run, I was doing home events, or you could say meetups, literally almost every single day of the week, okay? When I first like got started. Like it wasn't even like scheduled events. It was just like, yo, can you meet up? You get like to get started? Okay, cool. And I just happened, I just so happened to have my mentor, the person that got me started, like literally living with me at the time. Don't ever do that. Like, I, I love you guys, but I'm not going to live with you. Um, I'm not going to live with anybody on the team anymore. <laughs> okay, just in general, just in general. Like, I think, I think that needs to be separate. You need to go experience the things that you need to experience. And I need to go and do the things that I need to do. Okay. But don't, don't, pull, don't put yourself in that situation. If I wasn't living with that person, I would have just Zoom called them in. Like, I was literally doing that. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is you don't get posture at the top. You don't start doing those things, okay, or get those things once you're chairman. No, you develop them. You act as if you start where you're at with what you've got right now. Stop delaying because you keep delaying. Well, you're going to keep delaying the life that you want, the results that you want because of the way that you think and the way that you perceive this and your belief. So you don't get posture at the top of the mountain. You have to have posture from the beginning. And most times you have to, you have to kind of instill that posture in every single reaction when you have nothing to show for anything. And honestly, when it really doesn't make sense for you to have posture, but that's why I said earlier, if you're new or if people on your team are new, you're leading through excitement. Right now I'm leading through conviction because I have experience. And that's why it's all, that's why it's so powerful to help the newest person get just even a belief check. Cause that's a little bit, 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 and it adds up, it compounds. Okay. So you have to act as if right now you can't wait, you can't wait. So be postured and you will continue to grow into where you want to go and who you want to become. And this is the most powerful part about this. Okay. This is where I had my breakthrough. You could have all the scripts, system, everything. Okay. The, the, the perfect trading strategy, whatever you could have all that, but if you're not postured, you're not going to like, you will not get very far. So the reason I bring this up 
is because I get a lot of conversations throughout the week with the team, calls, texts, whatever. And a lot of times we are questioning the system. We are questioning, you know, what we're saying and what we're doing. We don't give it very much time. Like maybe we're only give, we've only given it a week or a couple weeks, honestly a month. Okay. And whatever it is. And then we question like, oh, does this actually work? Oh, like I can't build local or, oh, I can't talk to my war market. Then don't. But just know those same excuses that you're giving, your team is now fair game. Okay. I don't blatantly give excuses about doing things because I know if I do, just imagine the way that my, my team's thinking. It's not the excuse itself. It's the way that you're thinking about things. Y'all get, y'all get what I'm saying? So you could, it's not the scripts. Listen, it's not the scripts that don't work. Okay. The scripts are just there as a guide. It's not the scripts that don't work. It's not the system or the strategy that doesn't work. It's you. This was a breakthrough for me because I was trying to justify maybe why the script or the system wasn't work whenever I would hear conversations of, you know, this doesn't work or that doesn't work or whatever. And it was, and then I had a breakthrough the other night and I was like, yo, it's not any of that. It's posture. I can tell you right now, most of the, most of the time that I've had people on the fence to get started and they never got started was because of my posture. And that's, what's holding me back from, I mean, it's a lot of things, but like big time, that's, what's probably holding me back from going P5. And it's maybe what's holding you back from going to your next level is number one, if you're not even coachable, okay, if you don't even run the play, you got work, you got work, number one, coachable and your willingness, your desire to show up and, and do the work, okay, but if you're not postured while you're doing the work, you're literally going to get the same results, you're not going to get very far, okay, so hopefully you had a breakthrough with this, the script is there, it works, um, it's duplicatable, it's not mine, I learned this literally from some of the top um, people in our profession and what we do, it's you. You've got to go to work on you. Do you really believe in what you have? Do you really believe in the value of what you have is actually greater than external acceptance or approval? I don't care about what other people think. I don't care what other people like may say about me or whatever. Like I know that my intentions are pure and I know I've literally got the best thing on God's green earth. And I truly, truly believe that. Like how many conversations do we have a day where people don't have disposable income and they don't have a way or the right information or even the right community to go out and multiply it, to learn the right information. So I could go on and on, but y'all get what I'm saying. So posture, very, very important. And he also talked about emotions. He said emotions. How many of y'all get emotional when people message you back and they ask you dumb questions like, how much money do you make? Or, you know, like, let me see your results or I'll join you when you get results or like just questions that kind of like, I say make you cringe, like, or you at least want to cringe but because you know that it's not the question itself. It's the, it's their mentality about it. He said, you have to be very like emotionally aware because your emotions are your backbone when, when prospecting, when people tell like, and he even said this guys, this is why like sometimes when you, when you maybe send me a text about like what to say to people. I don't really answer their question because he was like, you don't have to answer everybody's question. You just have to know how to approach the conversation and ask the right questions. And uh, another thing too, guys, I hope that you're taking advantage of the leaders chat. Um, Cause I get text messages literally every week from people asking me, what are these leadership calls about? How can I get in? How can I get involved? And I only work with like, if you're in the chats, cause like I personally enrolled you and you told me that you wanted to build the business. Okay. And I try, um, if, they're, if they're helpful, great. If they're not, I won't do it anymore. But I try to give examples throughout the week of different conversations that I'm having and how I'm responding and handling it, okay? Um, certain questions that I'm asking to like literally get them to think differently, cool? So somebody that has a backbone, somebody that's postured, you can handle rejection all day long. It's a muscle that you build. It's not something that just happens, Okay. Do you think I'm cool with getting rejection? No, I get rejected every day, all day long. I've actually been tracking how many times I get rejected. Because if I get rejected 10 times a day, do you know how many yeses? You know how many more yeses I'm going to get from people? So I'm actually looking forward to the no's because I know that if I get more no's and I'm postured and I'm following the system, it's going to increase the number of people that um, I get yeses. Okay. So um, yeah, so anyways, I was just going to continue on, but you guys get my point. 
So I'm gonna talk about, let me check the chat. Okay, no chat, there we go. Um, so cold messaging, this is one thing that he actually said that was really important. So he said, how many of y'all on this call right now love to cold message, love to prospect? <laughs> Probably a rhetorical question. And I know this isn't the greatest analogy, but just bear with me, okay? So Ray Hayden actually said, because I get text messages a lot. I get when we do calls and stuff. Um, some 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 people have told me like, you know, Abby, I'm just not in the mood to prospect or, you know, I just don't ever want to prospect or I don't ever like, you know, want a cold message or, you know, I just don't, whatever. Like they feel weird about it. And I said, one, you're not postured. You got to get postured. But I'm going to say this too who really does like to cold message? Like, it's kind of like he gave the example of sit-ups and sit-ups are like, it is what it is. Like, you're just, you know, whatever. And it may not be the greatest example if you like sit-ups, but just get my point, okay? So he says, cold messaging is like sit-ups. Nobody likes sit-ups, but you love the result of it. And I know sit-ups, like if you are a gym rat, you understand like sit-ups aren't gonna get you a six pack, okay? Just get, hear me out, you know what I'm saying, okay? Um, cold messaging is like that. You don't, I don't love to do it, I don't like to do it, but I love the result of it. I know where it's going to take me. So anytime that you think that way, you just have to, you have to understand the bigger picture. I don't like it either. Like I don't not, I don't fall in love with cold market prospecting, but I do fall in love with, with the result and how simple this actually can be when you level up, you step up and you start to elevate the way that you think about this. So let me see what, I was going to tell you all one more thing. And if you have any questions, guys, I'm going to open it up to make sure I can answer them. Okay, this was one thing, so kind of over the posture thing, um, but I want to just talk about one last thing really quick that I wrote down, and it is this, because I think this is super, super important. So basically, I forget which video I was watching, I was reading something, but a lot of times when we take action, we're so focused on the result of the action, and we don't realize that you're actually going to find out more about not only yourself, but you're going to find out more of what not to do when you take action than what maybe to do. And I'm not saying like maybe what to say or anything like that because we have like a system, but I'm talking about like you yourself. You're gonna find out more about you and your posture, who you're being, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors when you're taking action than if you weren't taking action at all, okay? Because um, a lot of times we're just like, we're literally going for the kill. We wanna get a result. Um, from taking certain action. And sometimes you have to recognize, well, when was the last time that you prospected? When was the last time that you got an exposure? When was the last time that you stayed consistent for more than seven days, for more than two weeks, for more than 30 days, okay? So I just wanted to kind of give that because uh, a lot of times like we don't recognize that getting rejected or left on red or even people quitting your business is normal. And it's not a fun thing, but it happens. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you embrace those things, you're gonna allow yourself to build who you are and your vision and what's really possible over time than if you were to just kind of like not embrace it and you be combative and you have a blaming strategy um, inside of this, okay? So the last thing I was just gonna say is when it comes to, um, yeah, when this, this, this comes to taking ownership um, and I see, it, I see it a lot and that's why I wanted to say it really quick just to, just so everybody's clear and on the same page, but I want you to ask yourself, literally whatever you do, whatever you're thinking, however you're feeling, okay, those things literally bleed into your team. I have to be so mindful about who I am kind of like, who I'm showing up as when I'm doing certain things or on social, because I know like that's where the team watches me the most. Okay. And it's a great, like, it's a great responsibility. And that's what it is. Um, leading by example. And we can say that we want all these things and, and everything, but if you're not willing to take the responsibility and the, the leadership that comes with it, like you say, you want to lead, you say, you want to serve, you say, you want to impact. Well, does your leadership and service and impact have limits? Does it have borders? Mine doesn't. And I'm willing to lead by example through literally anything. And it's not just with our group, it's how can I serve and, um, and lead and impact in my organization? How can I serve and lead and impact inside of the company, inside of I'm Academy? How can I serve and lead and impact inside of, or not inside of, but like, you know, in, in our world around me, everything that I do, because how you do anything is how you do everything. So I wanted to just say a couple of things that I just thought about. You'll get my gist of what I'm talking about. 
But I want you to ever ask yourself, you ever notice that when you become quiet, so does your team? And I'm not talking about going ghost. Don't go ghost. You should go ghost for the negative people that you don't want to associate with anymore. You shouldn't go ghost with the people that are trying to help you, that are here to literally put you in a position to win. Okay. You ever notice that when you become quiet, so does your team? You ever notice that when you stop showing up, so does your team? You make excuses, so does your team? Or when you are present or you aren't present, where is your team? You show up to the Sunday night team calls. If you're not on, I know your team's not on. If you don't show up to these calls, I good luck. Because Christian said it the other day, he was like, because Christian has a group chat. I think there's maybe 15, 16 people. And like literally only half shows up. And it's like, why are, why are people even in the chat if they're not taking advantage of it? Like, doesn't make any sense. So I just want to leave you guys with that. The last thing I'm going to say is actually a really cool um, statistic that I heard from Ray from a video. And I'll leave you all with this. If you have any questions, I'm going to stop the recording and have you guys ask them. But he said this. Think about the number of people that you talk to a day, okay? And I honestly, guys, with my goals, I'm talking to more, but just to give you some perspective, the thing about it is we're not consistent with these numbers. That's why this is so powerful. So he said, or actually it was, it was his wife who said this. She said, if you talk to 10 people a day for 12 months, that's you know a little over 3,600 people in a year, 3,650 3, people in a year, okay? And let's say, for example, she did the math with like exposures, blah, 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 calls, whatever. She said, and you sign up 2%, you help 2% of 3,650 people get started. Even 1%, y'all, even 1% is like, I think it's like 45 people, okay, in a year. When was the last time that you brought on 12 people in a year? Cool, okay, 45, that's not bad. And she said, when you sign up 1% to 2% of that in a year, that's anywhere between 40 to 80 people that you just helped get started by talking to 10 people a day and following the system and having posture. But we're not bringing 40 to 80 people on a year, why? Ask yourself that. I, I'm asking myself that. So I wanted to leave, with, leave you with that because a lot of times we don't believe that we can bring on people for whatever reason. And that's just your own mental self-talk that you've literally got to work on. And it's not something that you need to take the time to just go and do and not take action. It's You need to be working on yourself while implementing, while taking action. So you can figure out what not to do, what actually does work versus what doesn't work. Okay. So that is, uh, that's the call for today, guys. That's really what I wanted to make sure that I could hit home a message for you just based on the conversations that I've been having, based on the phone calls, the text messages, the whole nine yards, and also where we're at as a team, as far as the organization, um, trying to kind of getting a temperature for everything. But I did want to hear from y'all. Um, does anybody have any specific questions on anything? I'm going to stop the recording just...